The car's going 110 miles per hour on the dyno right now. 120, 130. Oh my goodness, 140. What? 150? 155? Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and I am at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale, and I am reunited with my Mybox 62. Oh, it's so good to see you, but uh, unfortunately, it has broken. It didn't take well to storage out in the desert, and now it has a new warning light, which is a very, very dangerous one. Uh, but before we get into that and tour Barrett Jackson, along with a lot of hoopty selling here, a lot of them similar to mine, so I can get some comps. Uh, let's go back to Wichita, and we're actually going to go with this car on the dyno versus my SLS AMG. Now on paper, they should be the same. The SLS has 563 horsepower with the V8. This one, 550 horsepower with the V12. So putting it to the wheels, it may be the same on the dyno. Obviously the 060, because this thing is a giant elephant, it wouldn't be the same. But on the dyno, I thought it'd be similar. But turns out this thing completely sucks. But anyway, let's go back to Wichita and a younger Hoovy. I don't get to spend very much time back here. Have the uh, glass up. Kind of a sound test here. Because the dyno is very, very loud. Come on, Mybach. Be a dyno queen. Come on. All right, here we go. Whoa, it's pulling. It's still so quiet though. Look, speed is showing over 100 miles an hour. This is so weird and it's so insanely quiet because the dyno's so loud. I'm in a cocoon. The car's going 110 miles per hour on the dyno right now. 120, 130. Oh my goodness, 140. What? 150? 155? Holy moly! 5,000 RPM! <laughs> it just feels like I'm sitting in a massage chair in my living room. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, let's see what the power is. 362 and 288. So a Dino Queen this is not. It has 550 horsepower and it feels every bit of it, but doesn't want to show it on the dyno. It's shy. Kind of like Bob's being shy right now. Oh, I didn't know I was on camera. <laughs> now it's the SLS's turn and the billionaire doors aren't making the hookup easy to the uh, OBD, I'm guessing, huh? I'm gonna stay out and watch this one, but I'll need these for sure. Unlike my box. That's more like it. It's almost like a flip-flop, obviously with a twin turbo V12, it's all about torque. And with this one, it's a high revving, nationally aspirated V8. 462, 382. SLS wins. Yeah, how about that? It's a little dyno shy. And I should clarify that I'm not selling it despite that bad performance. I think it's just shy. because it really does have plenty of power. Uh, but this is the future collector car show at the polo grounds where Barrett Jackson takes place. So the auction hasn't started yet, but all the cars are here. Thousands of people are here. And I am parked next to Craig Jackson's slant nose that he talked about when we did the tour, what he was bringing to the Future Collector Car Show. Here it is in person, and it is absolutely gorgeous. You can see all the cars here are brought in by individuals as future classics, what they think will be the stars of future Barrett Jacksons in decades to come. And there's a lot of cool stuff, so we'll walk around it quickly, but then we're gonna go inside and see some of the hoopties that they're selling. Now 
let's look at the cars for sale, starting with the Ken Miles Mustang right here. It was built for Ken Miles, but unfortunately he died before he could race it as a race SCCA you know, Shelby. So quite special, GT2 RS, Carrera GT, F40, and then there's the GT2 RS, the green one over there that I drove. So a lot of big ticket item cars here, but there's also uh, some Movies Garage Hoopty Contemporaries here so I can get some comps for my cars. Uh, another Hemi Superbird, which uh, this one is not numbers matching, but it was very, very well restored. So we'll see how dumb I was for selling mine as a resto mod versus taking it and getting it restored properly, even though it didn't have the numbers matching engine, uh, even though it was sort of a wreck. So, but it would be a good comp. But anyway, let's go over to some Hoovy cars. Uh, look at the four GTs, just insane. Uh, that one, the Golf one, owned by John Mayer, if you like your music soft. But here is the Bentley Azure, an absolutely insane spec in yellow. Jean-Claude Van Damme probably could pull this off, but yeah, yellow on blue, just absolutely nuts. Then right next to it, an SLR Roadster. With about double the miles of mine, but obviously without that little hickey on the Carfax with the electrical uh, fire damage. And then there's the uh, SLS AMG, same year as mine. And another SLR McLaren. And on the corner here, they have a 1992 Diablo in purple. This one was owned by Danny Coker, Counts Customs at one point, uh, early Aventador over here. So this is the edge of the salon area. There are thousands of cars here. The tents are absolutely massive. So there's a lot more to see. Oh, how could I forget the GT350H? Another Hertz Shelby. Not in a race spec, but look at the cool wheels caps there for the Hertz. So there's the turbine powered Batmobile that I drove when I visited Barrett Jackson here last month and now we're in the back. But let's start looking at the comps here. We have an E-Type Jag, which is a 1968. So not quite as, so not quite as collectible as my series one, but this one is a nice restoration. So I would say it is comparable to 4.2 engine. Looks absolutely gorgeous. We have a yellow 355 Spider 1995. Mine is a 96, but uh, also a gated manual. This one has some miles though, 52,000 miles, too dark to see, but you can see it has a different steering wheel on there, a smaller one. Kind of like that actually, but some miles on a 355, but very, very clean. There's a 75 Targa, mine's a 79 SC, so not quite the same, but still very nice. Down here is a 2001 BMW Z8. Same color, same spec, perfect comp there. It's so cool to see the GMT 800 represented here. Same chassis as my Escalade. This one really cool because it only has 2,800 miles on it and it is armored. So this, listen to this. <laughs> so solid. You open the door and the glass is unbelievably thick. You can tell the door is enormously heavy as well and they definitely welded some reinforcements so the door doesn't fall off, but Oh, that is, that is a thud. Unbelievable. So this is the only 1968 Charger here. And if you notice something's a little off, well, uh, it is because it is riding on a 2008 Chrysler 300. So the sedan body, shaved door handles, you can kind of peek inside, see it has that 2008 Chrysler interior. They put a 68 Charger body on it. It is very, very strange. Oh, you can see a little better on this side, but unlike mine, you wouldn't have to worry about highway cruising at high RPM because it has a modern drivetrain underneath there, a whole modern chassis. Uh, Mercedes based, the Chrysler 300 was based on the Mercedes chassis. So what a mashup. Well, here's another Maybach, a 57S, formerly owned by Kevin Durant, the NBA player. The S was the AMG V12, so a little bit more power, but it is the short wheelbase. Looks like it is new in the wrapper. Yeah, really, really nice from the tail end of Maybach production. But that, but that actually leads to a good segue because we need to go back to the Maybach and talk about uh, what has broken on it, unfortunately. Yeah, could be bad. So every time I drive this car, I am greeted with a lovely warning light service brake visit workshop, which uh, could be as simple as brake pads hitting their wear sensors 
hopefully, fingers crossed. But uh, also, this car has SBC electronic brakes, very complicated thing from Mercedes uh, that they abandoned. And well, on a normal E-Class to replace that, it's about $3,000 if it's out of warranty. Uh, but on a Maybach, there's two of them because you have two calipers per rotor, so two pumps. And I don't know if it's special to the Maybach, probably, so everything on the Maybach's special, so. Anyway, it could be really, really bad. But the good news is no diminished braking performance, no red brake light, which would be really, really bad. So this thing should get me through the week. It won't leave me stranded as I do the Barrett-Jackson live coverage this week on history and FYI. So be sure to tune into that. But also this week is my fourth episode of Car Issues and it's sort of the make or break week. We've rated every time we've done well. This one, if it does well, they'll probably okay another season. So it's really important that you all tune into it. If you know somebody with a Nielsen box tell them to turn on their television and i'll end today's episode with a preview of my next car issues episode thank you so much for watching go, 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 go. it's a 2005 maserati brand sport it's just gorgeous all right this thing is incredible i feel like i'm driving a ferrari right now my alternator is going out. That'll help. Hey! A Maserati in a tow truck. Big surprise, huh? No surprise. <laughs>